Representative Smith. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and good evening once again. Madam Speaker, municipal elections, no doubt, are important in campaign finance for municipal elections uh, have worked in some areas of our state. But I think before we delve into fixing or addressing the campaign finance on a municipal level, uh, I think the Chamber has a need to address campaign finance on the state level. There, are, there have been various issues over the years with the campaign finance laws that we have. Politicians uh, over the years and, um, have had a stigma. Uh, sometimes we're looked upon not too favorably by the public, and there are various reasons for that. One of the reasons, I believe, Madam Speaker, is how we conduct ourselves when we run our campaigns. We often find that, especially here in Connecticut, where we have campaign finance supported by the taxpayers of the state of Connecticut, we made a promise with our taxpayers several years ago that if you fund the campaigns that we all run, uh, we'll adhere to certain rules and regulations. Well, the intent was uh, well-founded, and in fact, we enacted some good legislation over the years, and that has been substantially eroded over time and created loopholes. And the result, Madam Speaker, of that is that we have dirty money continually coming in to fund campaigns. We have attack ads uh, portraying all of us here in the chamber uh, in negative ways, and the public, Madam Speaker, ultimately is dissatisfied with the way uh, we conduct ourselves. So in an attempt to clean that up and actually have clean campaigns, campaigns that we can be proud of, campaigns that the public can be proud of, campaigns that the public would be happy to support and fund, uh, this amendment goes a long way in addressing the issues that have developed over the various years since this came into being, I believe, back in 2005. One of the things it does, and we propose here with this amendment, Madam Speaker, is to cap organizational expenditures by state parties. The amendment also seeks to reduce individual donor limits to state parties from 10,000 to 5,000. Some candidates uh, are fortunate enough not to have an opponent. Despite that, Madam Speaker, uh, the current law allows those who are unopposed to seek campaign finance funds up to 30 percent of what they normally would receive if they did have an opponent. This amendment seeks to address that by saying if you are unopposed, there is no need for you to have uh, campaign funding or financing, and therefore there will be no campaign funding for those candidates who are unopposed. The amendment also goes further and it seeks to prohibit state contractors from donating to a federal account to fund a state race. And we saw that in the last election cycle where funds were coming in from federal treasurers into state campaign races. It's called dirty money. Um, it's hard to track. We don't know who it's coming from. Uh, it creates in the eyes of the public a question of who's getting favoritism, who's not, who's uh, on the take and who's not, and where this money is ultimately ended into the coffers of various candidates. Madam Speaker, the amount of public financing for our campaigns is approximately $40 million. We're seeking to reduce that by 25%. As we know here in the chamber, and it's no secret to anybody following our politics here in the state or trying to go to work each money to pay their bills, that the state of Connecticut is in trouble. And a simple reduction of 25 percent just on the campaign finance can result approximately in seven million dollars in savings during a gubernatorial election cycle and 2.4 million in presidential years. Money that is, I would say, much needed, Madam Speaker. If we can adopt this amendment tonight in the, this chamber, it would go a long way to say to the state, to the public, to anyone who's listening that this chamber is serious about cleaning up our elections and I urge my colleagues to support it. Thank you.